falsifying the truth is, unfortunately, part of the history of the Wagner family. It started with Richard Wagner himself, and you can just see that in his first biographic sketches. Oh my goodness, he's just falsifying history, he himself. He started that. Then Cosima, the second wife, she became worse. Seventy letters were burned by Cosima to his mistress, Mathilde von Wesendonck, letters which had an enormous importance for Wagner's work, especially his opera Tristan and Isolde. Bayreuth was, until spring 1933, a private business, the Wagner family business. And then it became a foundation. The Wagner family played in German and European, not only in the German history, you know, quite a dark role. And you're building up even new Bayreuth on the ground of lies and falsification. The principle of power. Abusing their position by not opening up the archives of the Richard Wagner Foundation, when the foundation is theoretically owned by the public. This is unbelievable. They did always hide that. So falsification starts with Richard Wagner, with Cosima, my grandmother, of course, with Winifred, with the denazification, and then, then the 57 years of new Bayreuth. It was never ever really a real working through history, family and German history, and the closest connection. So this never has been done in a serious way. Cosima, my great-grandmother, was the illegitimate daughter of Franz Liszt, the great Hungarian pianist and composer, and his mistress, Marie Dagou. She became Wagner's mistress in the 1860s and bore him three illegitimate children, Isolde, Eva and Siegfried. While Wagner was still living in exile in Tripschen on the lake of Lucerne, although at that time she was still married to Liszt's favorite pupil, the conductor Hans von Bülow. Cosima is here played by Vanessa Redgrave and Wagner by Richard Burton. Cosima and her two sisters Blondine and Daniel are in Paris. Cosima and her two siblings Blondine and Daniel grew up in Paris. And because the parents didn't much care about the children and showed absolutely no interest in them, the children were in effect given away. Zuerst war es die Mutter von Franz Liszt, Anna, die sich um die Kinder gekümmert hat. First they were dumped on Liszt's mother Anna, but eventually given into the care of two incredibly old governesses, Madame Patazzi and her sister Madame de Saint-Mars. Und diese beiden alten Damen haben die Mädchen, also Cosima und ihre Schwester Blondine, im Stil des ancien Regime erzogen. And these two old women educated the girls as if they were still living in the ancien Regime. That is completely ignorant of all the values of post-revolutionary France. So Cosima was a classic grand dame in the French sense, apparently friendly, but ice cold apparently helpful, but on a whim refusing to help anybody. She was a very distant, but classy woman, one might say. And she was even a very distanced, very classy woman. This is a woman who died over 70 years ago, who grew up in a completely different cultural climate. Even so, there were many things she did which are horrible, terrible and inhuman. Der Tod Richard Wagners im Februar 1883 war natürlich die ganz große Zäsur. Wagners death in February 1883 was of course the big turning point in Cosima's life. And to underline this, she immediately elevated his death into something ridiculously tragic. Was wir wissen, 
Eine Nacht lang neben dem she lay the whole night in bed with the dead Wagner and fell asleep with a corpse. She cuddled the corpse as if practicing some bizarre cult. And after the corpse began to decompose and stink, she was eventually forced to leave the bed. So she cut her hair off and put this hair into a small velvet cushion, which she then put under the head of the corpse. It was like some pseudo-oriental dance of death. In the first months after Wagner's death, everyone thought the festival was finished. But Cosima very cleverly organized a coup. After all, in German law, a woman could not inherit. So she just announced that she was the new director, simply because there was no one else. That was her enormous contribution. She saved the Bayreuth Festival. Cosima ist in Paris der 1840er Jahre groß geworden. As a child, she had been indoctrinated by her ancient governesses with a virulent right-wing Catholic ideology. Auch von den beiden Gouvernanten, die bereits erwähnt worden sind, ja auch sehr stark mit politischer Ideologie durchsetzt. In addition, her first husband von Bülow was a true anti-Semite. So that Cosima natürlich mit dem antisemitischen And so Cosima had become infected with the anti-Semitic virus very early on. But it was the meeting with Wagner, who was also anti-Semitic, that made this virus explode. Virus ausbrechen lassen. And Wagner's own anti-Semitism was made worse. Curiously enough, also in Paris, by his jealousy of successful Jewish composers such as Mendelssohn. And Meyerbeer. Meyerbeer. Last time I encountered Meyerbeer was in Paris, in the music shop of Schlesinger. Was at one time Schlesinger's, now owned by a much more pronounced type of Hebrew, one Brandes. And while I made conversation with dear old Monsieur Henri, the only person left at all friendly and welcoming, do you know Meyerbeer hid from me? Meyerbeer, the Meyerbeer Greek, twittering Nibelungs, maggots deep in the flesh. Feeding on the sweet, pretty, fleshy confection that is Paris, a blood cake iced and spattered with silver and gold, pretty tunes, music for brothels. Deep inside the cake they twitter and wriggle and copulate and kiss and suck, growing bellies that are fat, shoulders broad enough to carry the ponderous crucifixion of fame, victors of the fame game. I, Meyerbeer, salute you with five acts and a ballet decollete called an opera. Bravo! An opera by Meyerbeer! The world hangs hushed on every nauseous note. Stands transfixed in awe, titles promising seriousness, hollow titles rattling with arias and melodramatic arpeggios, empty rhodomontar titles like The Prophet, a prophet who tells one nothing. Meyerbeer entitles his grand opera The Prophet, and it prophesies nothing! According to Cosima, Wagner left behind in Bayreuth a clear political message, not only for Germany, but for the rest of the world. So after Wagner's death, Cosima attracted to Bayreuth all the most radical, chauvinistic, anti-Semitic people from all over Europe. People such as Houston Stuart Chamberlain, who was English, by the way, and a distant cousin of the later British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain. And by marrying one of Wagner and Cosima's daughters, Eva, Houston Chamberlain became in every sense one of the family. Hitler was also a big fan of Chamberlain. And during his visit to Bayreuth in 1923, he went to visit Chamberlain in his sickbed. And even knelt before him, apparently. Hitler believed in Chamberlain's theories and later even went to his funeral. 
Chamberlain hat also in der Geschichte der Familie Wagner eine ganz Chamberlain ganz played a disastrous role in the history of the Wagner family. He sent his wife out to work so that he could sit at home and think. Chamberlain war ein Schaumschläger. He was a windbag, a poser, a fake who paraded himself like a peacock. If you tried to read his books today, they are rubbish. Heute lesen, es steckt da nichts dahinter. But the fact is that his standard work was a bestseller in Germany. There were 43 different editions. It was appreciate, appreciated by the emperor, you know, uh, so the William, William the, the, the second. So they, the, the Wagner family, now also Justin, uh, Stuart Chamberlain, no, were uh, honored guests no, in the imperial house. And the tragedy for the family was that the arrival of this racist in Bayreuth coincided with the revival of Wagner's last opera, Parsifal. He immediately, in combination with Parsifal, he became the chief dramaturg of the Bayreuth Festival. The subject matter of Parsifal is racial purity. Wagner sees the entire German nation in disarray and its vital strength being drained by foreigners. And the whole purpose of Parsifal was to explain uh, Wagner's concept of how the Aryan race might be restored. Deutschland begeht in den Festspielen 1938 den 125. Geburtstag Richard Wagners. Hitler saw this very, very clearly. Parsifal, he said, was the meaningful opera for him. And of course, it is the codification of Wagner's racial theories. What Wagner did was very, very dangerous. Because his work is mine contributed to a dreadful turn of events. Hitler's racial theory owes so much to Wagner that it's very hard to separate one from the other. Hitler at times adopts Wagnerian prose so that his style is Wagnerian and his vocabulary is Wagnerian. Vielleicht wird Manko derjenige sein, der es mir nicht verzeihen kann dass ich die marxistischen Parteien vernichtete. Aber mein Freund, ich habe die anderen genauso vernichtet. Parsifal has nothing to do with Christianity. Christianity as preached by the Roman Catholic Church or any of the major Protestant churches, nothing at all. People believe that they're going to an Easter experience. But it has nothing to do with Easter. Because he uses the communion service, He does really a black mass on stage. He, he takes the communion service, he gives it a new text. People still are under what Wagner thought was this terrible error that Christ was a Jew. The man who wrote Judaism in music in the 50s said there was a possibility for Jews to become human beings. But by the time he reissued his pamphlet, Judaism in Music, in 1869, he said it was impossible. Das Cosima Wagner angestiftet hat, dieses Buch ein zweites Mal zu veröffentlichen. Und dann erst mit der zweiten Veröffentlichung. In fact, it was Cosima who persuaded him to republish this book. And it was only with its second publication that anyone took any notice. The original publication had gone totally unnoticed. But with the second edition, bang, and that was entirely Cosima's doing. After Wagner's death, she quite simply erased any leftist revolutionary thinking of Wagner. So all that was left was Wagner the anti-Semite the German chauvinist and nationalist. 
and this she canonized as the word of the master. And that is her political legacy, made on behalf of the dead Wagner who couldn't answer back. So encouraged by Cosima, Wagner developed in numerous writings, writings plural, in his so-called Bayreuth beliefs, Bayreuther Blätter, his very aggressive, one side, anti-Semitic, chauvinistic Weltanschauung. This one has to know, to understand also what it means, Richard Wagner in Bayreuth. And this is what he actually wrote. The Jew is repulsive. He rules and will continue to rule as long as money remains the power. The Jew has come to dominate public taste in music. So join in this bloody battle. Redeem yourself from the curse that weighs upon you. Parsifal has an open meaning. Maybe Wagner knew, but it was often misinterpreted. That's why the Nazis, because of the blood motif, wanted a final interpretation. There's a wonderful letter from Goebbels. The Nazis will come to a conclusion, he says, after the final victory, when the Führer will make a decisive statement about the meaning of Parsifal so that it can be performed correctly forever. the archive of Bayreuth, hidden, as I have said. There's a writing where Wagner has the vision of a Germany free of Jews, Judenfrei, which is appalling for us. And then came my grandmother, Winifred. Ich bin 1897 I was born in 1897 of British parents in Hastings. Sadly, both my parents died before I was two, and so, age four, I found myself sent to Germany. You must remember that soon after she first came as a teenager to Bayreuth, she was married off to Wagner's son, Siegfried, who was already 54 years old. And when Hitler, who was a family friend, had attempted to seize power in Munich in 1923 and the putsch had failed, there was a great commotion in the family. The very good friend was missing, and then she heard he was in Landsberg prison. I asked what he needed. He said lots of writing paper, so I sent a whole load of paper from our house, Villa Wanfried. And my God, now people tell me I supplied the paper for Hitler to write Mein Kampf, almost as if I am responsible for Mein Kampf being written. Christmas 1923. My grandfather Siegfried, the husband of Winifried, wrote, We will remain true to Hitler, even if it should mean going to prison ourselves. The situation in Bavaria is appalling. The Jew and the Jesuit are working hand in glove to exterminate Germans. But Satan has miscalculated. Should the German cause really fail, then I'll believe in the God of revenge and hatred. I called him Wolf, and he called me Winnie. We had a very close relationship, as did the children. They all called him Wolf as well. It was a purely human and private relationship. I must confess, he made a very deep impression on me, as a personality. His eyes were especially attractive, very blue, large and expressive. Hitler had an insane passion for sugar and sweets. He had seven pieces of sugar in a small cup of tea. 
mad, but we always supported him. And I asked him to our house, Villa Wanfried, after I learnt he was very knowledgeable about Wagner, and he wanted to see Wagner's house and his grave. So I said to him, come to us tomorrow. Yes, he said, but tomorrow I must go to Berlin. But you've got to have breakfast somewhere, so just come for breakfast. And then he appeared the next day. It was in 1923, and stayed for breakfast. And afterwards, my husband showed him around the house. Hitler himself knew all the scores, he was able not only to read the scores, he could even play that. Hitler could even, uh, in a modest way, even uh, compose. So these, uh, and we have also parts of his overtures, not that does exist a score, which we can listen to completely in the style of Richard Wagner. So there are many uh, political, uh, uh, ideological, and even personal issues why he was, as we can read also in Mein Kampf, in the first chapter, the completely being taken and seduced by the power of Richard Wagner. My grandmother always said very proudly, yes, Hitler and I were really close. So a hospital was constructed in Bayreuth called the Winifred Wagner Krankenhaus. And there was a kind of an Aryan breeding going on. That means German pure, in the sense of the Nazi philosophy, uh, you know, blonde uh, heroes should create with blonde typical Nordic women, the master race, and that so close to the Festspielhaus. Wir gehörten mit zu denen, die unentwegt an den Führer glaubten, an die nationalsozialistische Idee glaubten und haben, ich kann wirklich sagen, durch dick und dünn zu ihm bestanden. So this is Omi, as she was called, no, by, the, by the grandchildren. This is unsupportable. You know, you, you cannot say, you cannot blame only the close collaborators of Hitler who did it behind Hitler. So that's not true. And Hans Frank, who was one of the closest friends, uh, even of the Wagner family, Hans Frank, the general governor of, you know, of uh, occupied Poland and responsible also for Auschwitz, he had even a love affair with the gouvernant of the four children of, of Winifred. She was a militant Nazi herself. And she was responsible for the education for Wieland, uh, Friedeland, Wolfgang, and Verena. So when she came to the point of Auschwitz, uh, and I said, Grandmother, stop that. It's, it's too much. So she said, but this is only the invention, you know, by, by certain cycles. And then especially, again, referring to, to New York Jews. She had always this idea. There's the world conspiracy comes from Wall Street and the Jews. No? So she had her, her obsessions and, and, and did not even accept she lived in her dream world. So she wanted to have Hitler always as the man coming from the Holy Grail, bringing light to Bayreuth and the rest of the world. From May 1944, there was constructed a branch of concentration camp Flossenburg, which was in Bayreuth. I felt an enormous deep shame, not guilt, but shame. How can it come, you know, that something like that could happen? We needed this kind of encounters with those now granddaughters and grandsons. Some of them knew, here, my grandfather was murdered. I mean, this is, uh, you know, what can you say? Then, uh, just... Uh Hitlers Liebling war Wieland. Und Wieland hat von Anfang immer angebettelt, er will nicht in den Krieg. Hitler's favorite of Winifred's children was Wieland. And Wieland begged him not to be sent to the war. Ein junger, kräftiger, gesunder Mann war. Und der But when finally in 1943-44 all the reserves were drafted in, 
Because Wieland was a young, strong, healthy man, he couldn't avoid being drafted. So Hitler ordered a concentration camp to be built in Bayreuth and gave Wieland the job of being its director. Wieland Wagner was for this period with his uh, brother-in-law, you know, Bodo Lafferenz, who was also a very fiery Nazi, in charge of this concentration camp. Bodo Lafferenz was practically the king in Bayreuth. Bodo Lafferenz was practically the king of Bayreuth. He was its employer. He controlled the money. He had the festival effectively under his control. And through his marriage to Verena, he became part of the family. And in this concentration camp, they made some kind of chemical experiments, but of course, often with dangerous results. There are descriptions of these experiments being done with and to the slave workers in the camp. Bodo Lafferenz did the organization Kraft durch Freude, Strength by Joy, and all the soldiers were obliged to go to the Bayreuth Festival before having the honor to die for the Führer for the final victory. So this is also a very macabre situation, like a, a black mass. You go as, as a religious service to Bayreuth, no? believing in the superiority, and then going to Eastern Europe and fight, still having the music of Richard Wagner in the ear. Und die Leute, die hatten sich das ja nicht ausgesucht. Da waren äh, einfache, die meisten waren einfache Soldaten, die sich zwar And of course, the poor soldiers had to file past Wagner's grave at Warnfried. Aber von Wagner hatten die überhaupt noch nichts gehört. Die waren eigentlich Most of them were just simple soldiers who had never even heard of Wagner, but had been chosen for the special privilege because they were wounded or something. Most, though, had come to just eat and drink, but what they got was just a strenuous journey. Und auch die Vermieter in Bayreuth waren nicht sehr erfreut. And the landlords in Bayreuth were not happy either, because during the war there was hardly any linen for the beds. Die armen Leute mussten dann, weil das ja ständig sich... So you have to imagine these poor people having to change the linen every day for these filthy soldiers. Und sie hatten kein Waschpulver und kein heißes Wasser. But they didn't even have any hot water or washing powder. But these performances were a huge success for Winifred. Unglaublicher Erfolg, denn Hitler hat sehr, sehr großzügig bezahlt. Das heißt, sämtliche Plätze, die er übernommen hat, because Hitler paid for everything, huge sums of money. An das Haus Wagner bezahlt. Financially, Winifred and the Wagner family were never so well off as during those war years. Es ist finanziell nie so gut gegangen wie in diesen Kriegsjahren. Hitler even wanted to build a new Festspielhaus, to have the old Festspielhaus roofed over and used only for very special occasions by very special people. And another theater built around the old Festspielhaus used for all public performances. By March 1945, the world was burning. Wieland was still controlling the concentration camp Flossenburg Bayreuth. And yet still, with Hitler's approval, he was actually planning a new Bayreuth festival. So these kind of constellations, these contexts, certainly were hidden. Especially the one of Wieland in Flossenburg till 1987. This did not come out. Im Jahr 45 ist Wieland sofort geflohen und hat sich in die französische Zone verzogen. Wieland fled immediately in 1945 and hid in the French zone. He was very scared that he would be immediately arrested. It was well known that he was a Nazi. But later I had huge problems, especially with his daughter Nike, who categorically maintained that her father had always been against Hitler. 
Er war der große Nazi in der Familie. But it's not true at all. It's all in the documents. You just have to read them. Whatever his artistic achievements later, he was the big Nazi of the family. He simply went into hiding. His mother could also have gone into hiding, but she wanted to testify. Her son, however, just disappeared. And her son was away. Also für mich war wirklich der Großschock. And for me, the big shock was the film which Sieberberg made about my grandmother in 1975. It's great that it was made. Aber es war natürlich. I was in Munich and went to see it in a local cinema. And I watched these five hours in a small cinema in shock, total shock. Shock. Total shock. I always had these pictures in my head of Winifred, Omi we called her, sitting all day long at her typewriter. And one Christmas I saw her carrying a load of presents in a washing basket. Then I said to her, Omi, who are all these presents for? And she said, for those poor pigs in the East Zone. During her denazification, my grandmother was preaching aggressively, you know, I'm innocent, I did my duty. What the hell do they want? I'm absolutely, I did never wrong. And people even applauded in the hall. But the trial was faked. I mean, Winifred said, oh my goodness, this, this American officer, also a Jew, no, I will, uh, silly man, he thinks that I would give him the real, real stuff. No? And then she made always parties. April 20th, which is Hitler's birthday. So she, she sent the cards, you know, and then a uh, wonderful, um, I'm so happy to invite you, uh, for special remembrance no, of USA, unser seliger Adolf. That was not the United States of America, but that was our blessed Adolf. And then she signed with 88, which is the eighth letter in the alphabet, which is H, Heil Hitler. My son has spoken out so negatively about the current administration of the festival in all those public lectures he gives. And especially that he has declared that my colleagues and fellow workers just pretend to be sympathetic to Jews. And that I am also following negative national socialist tendencies. This is such a preposterous and monstrous and false accusation. And moreover, it's an insult to me and my staff that it is absolutely impossible for this to be allowed to continue. So he can't have any tickets. That's right. I can't accept him as a guest because of my staff. If he speaks so negatively about them and attacks everybody, including me, in such a negative way, that he simply cannot be allowed into the theatre anymore. Angreift und behandelt, dass der hier in dem Haus sein kann. Just take his autobiography. There's a statement when he says, when Wieland and I took over in 1951, we had not the slightest need to put ashes on our hair because we were much too young, you know, and we had no responsibility. They saw in the 30s and 40s so much more than the rest of the world. They knew about Auschwitz, they knew about what was going on in the rest of the world. So when he says that proclaiming, we are completely innocent. As we know, Hitler talked and talked, his monologues never ended, and talked about his visions of the final victory. And he had in mind that uh, Wolfgang should be the general opera director for all the theaters in the East. I'm not talking about Germany, I'm talking about the rest of the world. And Wieland should be the director of all the Western theaters and opera houses. So they have this kind of completely insane, lunatic ideas what would be done then after the final victory. I'm not blaming my father for that when he was this young man. But when he writes a biography as a man of 75 years, then he has to put all 
on the table and write about it and also in a certain way coming to the point where at least saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, you know, 60 million dead people, that's too much. When the great theatre in Bayreuth was built in 1876, Wagner had five children. His only son, Siegfried, two daughters from Cosima's marriage to Hans von Bülow, and two with Cosima. One, definitely, Eva, who later married Houston Stewart Chamberlain, and one, maybe, called Isolde, my grandmother, named after the heroine of his opera, Tristan and Isolde. After Wagner's death, Cosima forced her ex-husband, at that time her ex-husband, von Bülow, to declare that Siegfried was Wagner's son, which meant to be the only heir. All the other children were excluded now from the Wagner heritage. But you don't need a DNA test to see that Isolde is a Wagner. And she was the one who also dared to contradict Cosima. Dann hat Isolde 1900 einen jungen Schweizer Kapellmeister namens Franz Beidler. But in 1900, Isolde married a young Swiss Kapellmeister, Franz Beidler, and this brought great unrest and tension in the family. Denn Franz Beidler hat sozusagen das dynastische Prinzip. Because he began to question the whole dynastic principle, especially when they produced a son. Now, for Cosima, by questioning the dynastic principle, not least because under German law, Siegfried, her only son, was illegitimate, this crime justified throwing Isolde and her husband and son out of the family. Finally, Isolde decided to sue her mother to establish her true lineage. Cosima considered that blackmail. And the Cosima is not going to be blackmailed, mm -hmm. even if it's her family. Isolde lost the case. The verdict of 1914 is legal up to today. So the consequence was that Isolde was expelled from Bayreuth. Isolde suffered tremendously. It's probably the saddest thing that could happen. And so actually, you are talking to someone who is legally a von Bülow, and I'm expecting your next film on the Bülow branch or whatever you would say. During rehearsals, Cosimo used to sit behind a black curtain and observe what was going on on stage through tiny holes, thus demonstrating that she was the power. And the black curtain, of course, reminded everyone of a Catholic confessional box. Just as in church, those who wanted something had to approach the confessional box. Cosima would not speak, but simply handed out written orders. This was incredibly clever psychologically. Kommandozettel ausgegeben. Und all das war natürlich eine unglaublich geschickte psychologische she elevated herself to be an oracle that you could consult and from which you received instructions. Und sie hat die Richtung vorgegeben. Cosima als Chefin da saß und nicht gesprochen hat. Cosima simply sat there and did not speak. Fand die Diskussion nicht statt. You were not allowed to talk to her and no discussion took place. Her word was law. Cosimas Wort wurde zum Gesetz. Wagner war tot. Wagner was dead. Wagner konnte also nicht mehr für sich sprechen. Therefore, he could not speak for himself. Cosima was the voice of the master. 
She took on the authority of the dead Wagner and so spread the gospel according to Richard Wagner. Social, artistic, political and philosophical. But it was at best an interpretation. A falsification spread through her illegitimate son Siegfried, a dangerous perversion of Wagner's ideas and his art. Between 1914 and 1924, there was no festival. The Festspielhaus was on the verge of bankruptcy. Just as in 1883, after Wagner's death, and again in 1918, after the end of World War I, it was not clear if the festival could survive. Inflation and the war loans that the family had given the German government, they'd given a lot of money to fund the war, had ruined the family. At the beginning of the 1920s, the Wagner family was more or less bankrupt and it was thought that the festival would never reopen again. So how and why did my grandmother Winifred arrive in this situation. Das kind war ein Waisenkind und man wusste nicht, she was an orphan, as we have seen. When her parents died, as she had no relatives in England, she was put into an orphanage. Da hat diese kleine Winifred dann auch sehr And their little Winifred had big problems with her health. Das fing also an mit so einer she had a kind of nervous dermatitis, eczema. Die also sehr lästig war mit uh, mit so Eczemen auch, die sie hatte, also ganz schwierig. They couldn't tolerate that in the orphanage, probably because it was just too much work. So the people running the orphanage began to look for any relative to take her away. As there was no one in England, and as they knew she had very, very distant relatives in Germany, so they wrote to them. And these were the Klindwurt. Dann kam dieses Kind ganz verschreckt, sie konnte kein Wort Deutsch. So this child came, very scared, didn't know a word of German in the countryside near Berlin. It's a miracle that such old people who'd never had a child themselves, and the wife also being not at all well, liked the child so much they said, she can stay. Klinwurt was a famous pianist, old enough to have actually known Richard Wagner personally. In fact, had done all the piano reductions of the operas. And when Winifred was 17, an invitation arrived to go to Bayreuth. Mrs. Klindwert was sick, so Klindwert took the young Winifred. And during one of the tea intervals with the family, the family all said, hmm, pretty girl. Siegfried apparently didn't notice. But all the aunts were saying, hmm, that would be great, because they needed a young girl for the not-so-young Siegfried, so that she could quickly become pregnant. They desperately needed him to have a child. None of the four sisters had any children. Then... And nor did Siegfried, because he was homosexual. That was the problem. He absolutely had to have a child, otherwise the dynasty would become extinct.
Und da war sie streng und mein Vater eben ganz. And she was a strict one. Und er hat uns. My father was much more lenient. Tun lassen, zum he let us do a lot. Uns rauchen lassen. For example, he let us smoke. Mein Bruder sechs Jahre. My brother was six and therefore was younger. Und jünger. Und er wusste genau, uns wird and he knew exactly that we would be so sick that we wouldn't want to touch a cigarette ever again. So I've never smoked again. Franz und Isolde Beitler haben an irgendeinem bestimmten Punkt At some point, Franz and Isolde Beitler decided to blackmail Siegfried. No doubt as a result of being thrown out of the family. They wrote letters to Siegfried in which they said, we know very well what you get up to. We have gathered loads of material about you which we intend to give to the press. We intend to out you. Which would have been a major international scandal and ruined him. The only possibility of asserting that he was not homosexual, which was criminal, of course, was to marry. Natürlich wusste Winifred über die sexuelle Orientierung ihres Mannes Bescheid, und sie hat das auch toleriert. Of course, Winifred knew about Siegfried's sexual orientation. She tolerated it, never complained or even said anything. It was as if she didn't want to know. So war sie eigentlich eine ziemlich einsame Frau. And thus she was very lonely. She had to care for her very sick mother-in-law, Cosima, for the house, for the servants, but with very little money. Sie haben ja kaum Geld gehabt und sie haben dann versucht, in Amerika das Geld zu holen. They were almost bankrupt. They even went to the States so that Siegfried could conduct concerts of his own music. But they were almost all cancelled because no one wanted to hear his music. Aber die wurden fast alle abgesagt, weil keiner ihn hören wollte. We know from the diaries of uh, uh, Josef Goebbels, also of course an Adolf Hitler, this was always, oh, he is disgustingly decadent. He is not even a real man. Siegfried Wagner, because also for his homosexuality, was indeed blackmailed. And the Siegfried Wagner house itself, to the left of the main house, was built not just that he could withdraw to compose, but so that he could entertain his homosexual friends away from his mother, wife and children. Siegfried hat sich um nichts gekümmert und alles hat Winifred gemacht. Denn die Tanten... Siegfried didn't care about anything. She did everything. And the aunts, Wagner's children, kept fighting among themselves, mostly about the finances. Winifred had to work exceptionally hard. So what would have happened to the dynasty without Winifred? No successes. No more festivals. So this poor orphan from England had to do the lot. They had no scenery. Everything was broken. She was a blessing for the house Warnfried. I can't imagine what they would have done without Winifred. It would have collapsed. Was die gemacht hätten ohne die Winifred kann ich mir überhaupt nicht vorstellen. Das wär, hätte nicht, das, das hätte nicht geklappt. Meine Großmutter fand, dass also junge Frauen. My grandmother thought that all young women should be kept busy. And so she told her to do the dusting in the big room, to clean the books nicely and so on. Although she spoke German and even French, you could tell from her accent then that she was English. So every day she would have German lessons with Cosima and also read to her every day. It was not true that the old woman was blind, although I'm sure she had bad eyesight. She was far too vain to wear glasses. There are no pictures of her wearing glasses. Winifred said that. And so, because she refused to wear glasses, she preferred to walk through the world half blind. That's the truth. She was very sensitive to light and always lay in her couch away from the light. But we children could go to her whenever we wanted. And we really took advantage of that, because she was incredibly 
humorous. Humorvoll. And played jokes und with us. And we were allowed to climb all over her bed. Und, uh, wir auf diese we could do her hair. We could dress her up, anything we wanted. But already in 1923, when Verena was only two, my grandmother had fallen in love with Adolf Hitler. Der Zusammenbruch im Jahre 23, im November 23, haben wir ganz unmittelbar miterlebt. Der 8. November sollte ja der Auftakt zur nationalen Revolution und zur nationalen Umkehr werden. Und es war ein großes Festkonzert in München geplant, am Abend des 8. bzw. am 9. November, bei dem ein Mann dirigieren sollte. Wir waren also in München und erlebten doch den Zusammenbruch und all das Tragische, was es zum nächsten Mal mit sich brachte. Man muss wissen, dass die Winifred als 18 We mustn't forget that Winifred was only 18 when she married my grandfather, who was already over 50. So it's clear that the much younger Hitler was somehow her dream. He was also the guy with power. And she soon was introducing Hitler to her children as Papa. There was certainly discussion about my grandmother marrying Hitler. She wanted to, undoubtedly, but Adolf said she could not divorce my grandfather in order to marry Hitler. She was absolutely falling in love with him. The very early times, this man comes to Bayern and says, when I come to power, I will resolve all your problems. Don't worry, Winifred. We will be, and you know, just phone me when, and when I come to power, I will, everything will be done for you. And having this now weak, weak also husband, you know, <laughs> so he says, I will do it. I will be the strong man for power too. So, I mean, in Winifred, with her also frustration, sexual frustration, I personally do believe there was also some idea of marriage, no? My grandmother gets very aggressive when you talked about it. When grandmother became very aggressive, that means there must be something true. That means this kind of political marriage. Winifred would have been losing her job as Frau Wagner in Bayreuth. And that's not Winifred. She wanted to be always number one of the festival. No? So that's Winifred. No? <laughs> Power was more important than to be, to be Frau, Frau, Frau Hitler. No? <laughs> But then, in 1930, my grandfather died only a few weeks after his mother, Cosima. And so the stage was set for a completely new situation. She was a brilliant organizer. It was incredible. Everything had to happen on time, to the minute. For example, we were never allowed to be late to table. We would have breakfast at 7, because after that we had to go to school. And she always demanded we had a proper breakfast. Lunch was at 12.30. Anyone who wasn't there on time just wasn't let in. I have an example. This dog, he was a schnauzer. 
And when there was an empty seat at the table, he would sit on it. And then no one could take that seat anymore, because he would bite. And so we would have to go to the kitchen. We weren't allowed to go to the dining room anymore. Friedelind Wagner was the second child of uh, Siegfried and Winifred. She was born in 1918, and I think she was never adequately appreciated by the Germans for what she did and what her life meant. You can see this by the fact that the book she wrote in 1945, which was quite a bestseller in the States, was published in Germany in 1994. That's nearly 50 years later. People just didn't want to discuss her. The children were fascinated by this man. He used to come in the nights when he secretly traveled to Bayreuth, when he came upstairs and showed them his pistol and told them stories. He often invited them to Berlin, and they went there with a special train. And uh, he, she was fascinated, as the rest of the people were, too. Bayreuth was just for him a good cover. He always said that the world press would see him in Bayreuth and think he was there just because he loved Wagner. But behind the scenes in our home, many political decisions were made. The bombing of Spain, the invasion of Poland using my brother's geography book, the assassination of the Austrian Chancellor Dolfus, and all while the world was not watching. Ab 33 war natürlich Bayreuth ein Kernpunkt des Dritten Reiches. Bayreuth wurde in diesen Wochen Bayreuth was a pivot of the Third Reich. During the weeks of the festival, Bayreuth became Hitler's headquarters. In der Zeit als Hitler in Bayreuth war, he obviously felt very much at ease working out his political plans. Siegfried wasn't consulted. He wasn't intelligent enough. But Hitler often consulted Winifred. Winifred oft gefragt. I mean, of course, she was very privileged by Hitler. He gave the family money and he enabled them to travel uh, to, to all sorts of places. So it was a difficult thing for her to do the opposite. I mean, when you think of her, her older brother, um, Wieland, he was up to 1945. He believed in Hitler and so did Wolfgang and Verena certainly too. So I think it was a quite an extraordinary thing for her to turn against him. First of September 1939, where the Germans invaded Poland, and this, I think, was the last straw for Frieden, and she now decided she was going to leave Germany for good. It was one of the greatest scandals that uh, the closeness to Uncle Wolf, the daughter of Winifred, she certainly threatened her very strongly, you know, you have to come back, that she will be even executed when she does not come back to Germany. And there were contacts, as we know, with Himmler. So this is absolutely true. Sometimes it's denied, unfortunately, or this, this kind of falsification of the brothers. Her mother gave her four options, which she had got from Himmler, from the chief of the SS, and um, she discusses these four options with Toscanini. The one is to come back, at German, to, come back to Germany at once. She says, Friedelin says no, on no case. The other one is to remain in, in a neutral country and shut up. And she says, no, I can't do that either. The third is to go to an enemy country, for instance, England, and to shut up. She says, no, I can't do that. And the fourth option which she chose was go to an enemy country and not shut up. And this she told her mother straight in her, into her face and her mother had to leave and uh, was, of course, uh, very much uh, in fear that something might happen to Friedelind. She went from Lucerne via France to England and there she had a really stupid fate. She was imprisoned as a foreign enemy First on the Isle of Man, together with lots of Nazi women. Isle of Man, with Nazi 
And then she was put in jail in London. And that's where Toscanini came to rescue her. She did broadcasts in the States, mostly about Hitler and defending her grandfather Wagner. Deutsche Hörer, ich habe Deutschland nicht leichthin verlassen und bin erst fortgegangen, als die mörderischen Absichten des augenblicklichen deutschen Regimes klar am Tage lagen. Und selbst dann noch habe ich mich gefragt, wie würde mein Großvater, wie würde Richard Wagner gehandelt haben an meiner Stelle? Wäre er geblieben, Richard Wagner, der die Freiheit und die Gerechtigkeit mehr geliebt hat als selbst die Musik, hätte in Hitlers Deutschland nicht atmen können. Winifred was shocked about this, of course. She got a letter from uh, from a Nazi saying, would you please explain why your daughter is doing this? And she did her best to, to say, my daughter has been influenced by Jewish people. And uh, she was eager to explain that it was not her own free will, which of course was nonsense. She waited until 1953, until she really for the first time set her foot on German soil for 15 years. But she got a very mixed press. People didn't really want to have to do with her. You know, she didn't realize that the those people who had emigrated were not greeted very heartily by Germans. When I think of Marlene Dietrich, she wasn't applauded in the way she had expected, and the same happened to Friedelind. And Friedelind is very uh, shocked by the way that former Nazis came into their old jobs again, and she over-exaggerated, of course, by saying Germany is turning Nazi again. She was disgusted by the way things had developed. She was very critical of Bayreuth. She keep, kept on um, stressing that, that she saw too many Nazis, former Nazis there. She didn't like the conservative, uh, the right-wing attitude of Bayreuth. They always were very right-wing in, in Bavaria. Uh, and, of course, she said these things out loud, and this made her brother furious. Wolfgang really got mad at her. Bayreuth was Nazist, as ganz Deutschland Nazist was. Bayreuth was as Nazi as the whole of Germany was Nazi. But Bayreuth chose to forget its history when Germany chose not to. After the Eichmann trial in 1961, there was an awful lot of soul-searching in Germany. But in Bayreuth, this only happened 15 years later in 1976, and even then, it never came from the festival direction itself. Ja, das Haus Wagner war, glaube ich, immer in Theorie antisemitisch. The Wagner House was always in theory antisemitic, but I believe never in practice. To believe that Wagner was responsible for all that happened to the Jews is silly. Yes, my grandmother Cosima was brought up antisemitic, and we know from her diaries that she frequently made horrible comments. But we also know from the close friendship with the conductor Levi, for instance, and many others, that she tolerated Jews. Like poor Rubenstein, who was forced to convert to Christianity. In February 1945, when we came here to Nussdorf by Lake Constance, our mother gave us the scores of Tristan and Parsifal, as well as the whole of the Wagner List correspondence. The point was that the archive should be dispersed, so that if a bomb or the enemy had destroyed something, other things would survive. First, we buried the scores here in the garden. They were well wrapped in my children's nappies and then wrapped in leather and sealed with wax. Then we buried them out there during a foggy night because we had lodges and we didn't want them to notice what we were doing and report us. Im Haus hatten, und die ja auch nichts merken, ne? 
Und dann nach etlichen äh, Wochen After several weeks, äh, hat mich plötzlich die Angst gepackt, dass ich die panic. Feuchtigkeit rankommen könnte. Maybe the humidity would affect the parcel. Nachts ausgegraben und haben festgestellt, es ist alles wunderbar. So we dug up the scores, realized everything was okay. Da sind die Wände aus zwei äh, Holz. But then buried them now in the walls of the terrace, because the walls were made of two layers of wood with a gap in between. And that's where we put them next, but this also gave me sleepless nights. So I kept thinking, what if the mice attack it, because we had lots of mice. Und wir haben hier viele Mäuse. Ich gebe zu, ich meine, das alles, was... I admit that everything that happened in the last half of the war, I totally reject. But I will not pour out the baby with the bathwater. And I insist that what I considered good and humane about Hitler remains true. Gut und menschlich an dem Mann gehalten habe, das lasse ich mir einfach nicht nehmen. Und ich will and I will not be untrue to this memory. I mean, he had such a unique personality that I would not have wanted to miss that experience. Nicht missen möchte. Wenn man sich vorstellt, ein Waisenkind kommt zu uralten, Imagine it. An orphan arrives in Berlin to stay with geriatric, unknown people, didn't know any German. Then at 17, suddenly arrives in Bayreuth and within a year or so is effectively the boss. So this is a woman who has had to fight her way through life and suddenly someone comes with offers of help. Winifred always said Hitler helped us. So there would be no Bayreuth without Hitler. Bayreuth würde es nicht mehr geben ohne Hitler. She was a monster, an iron lady, a harsh mother, a domineering character within the family. There was no human closeness, no warmth, no real understanding. And one mustn't forget that she was still relatively young when at age only 50, her reign over Bayreuth was, as a result of her Nazi past, and she certainly felt this way, taken from her unfairly and given to her sons. What happened was that her authority, her power, was taken away from her. Who could she dominate now? So her wish to dominate was now focused on her family, and so she destroyed it. The auditorium was built like a great wooden platform. It has no real foundations whatsoever. Underneath, it's completely hollow. And the ceiling is very similar. On the outside, the ceiling has been plastered. But up there, once again, it's completely hollow. It's not a real ceiling as we understand it. In fact, there are two ceilings suspended with nothing in between so that the ceilings just vibrate. Uh, like the body of a violin. Yes, yes, like the body of a violin. So always, as a director or as a musician, you have to figure out the relation between the sound from the stage and the sound from the orchestra, because the orchestra is in fact invisible, and so the audience feels it is in the middle of the sound. <laughs> zum 75-jährigen Jubiläum der Bayreuther Festspiele nach zehnjähriger Unterbrechung. Schon seit Wochen sind die Karten für den Zyklus in alle Welt ausverkauft. Der Theaterfundus des Festspielhauses musste neu aufgebaut werden, nachdem der alte Bestand an Kostümen in den Nachkriegsmonaten geplündert und zerstreut wurde. Am Regietisch die beiden Enkel Richard Wagners Wieland und Wolfgang. Wieland, wo ist das Zentrum? He renovated the theater, and uh, that was very important. How we went to kind of this reactionary 
uh, environment, so to speak, when he was very young. As I mean, you know, when he was 14, 16, he was living in a terrible environment. <laughs> How he did get rid of that within six years, from 45 to 51, he transformed totally himself in somebody uh, very important and uh, very capital even in the development of Bayreuth. There's a much quoted sentence by Richard Wagner. Children, make something new. If you hang on to the old, the devil of laziness will get you. I never intended my productions primarily to shock. My ring staging had an echo in the world press and also with our international audience. But I must remind you that my original staging was roundly booed. My second staging, six years after the first, was booed even more, before eventually it found some success. My grandmother always sat in her box with her back to the audience. She really did sit like that, with us children around her. She said what Wieland is doing is shit, it's revolting, I can't stand it. And in any case, the singers are bad. With her body language, she was signaling that she found it all bad. When I began first in 66, Wieland came to fetch me at the airport of uh, Nuremberg. And then, also, I mean, uh, I must say, I, because it was so extraordinary, the son asked me, you know, there is nothing in the theatre, do you want to see the theatre? Because I was never in Bayreuth before, not even as a listener, I mean, as a public in the, in the audience. So I say, yes, certainly. And then I visited this theatre. We were alone there. And I had the impression to be within a sculpture designed by Wagner himself. I know that Wieland wanted more and more out of Bayreuth. I remember we had plans together to augment the repertoire. What can you do? You, you can do Strauss, of course. You cannot do Mozart in this kind of type of environment. So you can do Strauss and uh, Wozzeck or Lulu. And so. Wieland has thought of that at one point. And we had a list of works we, we wanted to do together. One of the main ideas of Wagner was to do a school for opera, for the theatre, not only for singers, a school for all professions which have to do with the opera theatre. That would be a really a very good, very good, uh, because that doesn't exist in the world. Es wird viel experimentiert. We did a lot of experimenting. Perhaps in the end, still too little, but my colleagues encouraged me. Selbstverständlich über jeden Kollegen. Especially as I feel I'm working without security, without any safety net. I admit it needs courage to work against the constant danger that threatens every opera house, namely the reliance on tradition and the sloppiness that usually results. Die Schlamperei der Firnis der Tradition anzugehen. My father always said, somehow it will happen. When we read Mickey Mouse, that was fine. Bravo magazine, he found terrible. We had our freedom, but a bit more discipline would have been good. And we four children, for example, were allowed to run around the Festspielhaus, under the stage, in the orchestra pit, and listen from above. We didn't have to sit in our chairs and listen. 
And of course, my brother and I took advantage of that, because as a child to endure a whole Wagner opera was fairly stupid. So we would crawl all over the place. We were up in the flies on top of the stage, and there we saw a great instrument with four fat keys. What is it? And my brother said, well, it's not a piano, because that has got many keys. So what does this thing do? And he started hitting them. And they were the four Parsifal bells that were always played from up there. And of course we played it all wrong. But the real problem was that underneath on stage was a performance of Meistersinger. So it was completely wrong. So falsch. I mean, this is the royal family of Germany. There is nothing like Bayreuth. This is absolutely the top. But he couldn't cope a private, he couldn't live a private life. Really, and, and that marriage also to Gertrude at that young age was just an escape from that strong mother. Also, Winifred had there auch überall. And Winifred was always sending letters everywhere, rubbishing my mother Gertrude and describing Anja as the whore of the Kurfürstendamm. And then they had no money, and the arme Wolfgang, der musste dann herumziehen und irgendwo ein Geld herholen. And then they didn't have any money. Wolfgang had to go around with a begging bowl. That's why the brothers kept fighting, because Wolfgang said that Wieland was wasteful and couldn't manage money. Anja Silja told me Wieland constantly borrowed money from me. But she was only 18 or 20. She was a good singer and earned well, perhaps. But she always had to pay for everything. And then everyone blamed her for the marriage difficulties. Oh, that girlfriend, etc., etc. But she practically financed him. And the wife, Gertrude, she was terrible. She was incredibly stupid. She also had lovers. She found some worker. She even writes about it in her memoirs. She had these wonderful hours with her lover in Greece. There was this young muscular man who had come through the window and... So stupid. So <laughs> blöd. He was heaven on earth, this worker, a builder or something. The weight of the family, I mean, the father being actually homosexual uh, was a big problem for him. He was always fearing that he becomes homosexual himself. And he was always trying to escape himself from the beginning on. And he also uh, always said, you know, I never wanted to live. I just, I don't want to live. I, I, I don't like me. He always tried to be faithful, to go back to the family, and he never made it. Because he loved me, and uh, I loved him deeply. I think he never dealt with anything very deep inside. He never spoke about the time of Hitler, of course. But that is, I think he died from that, that he never really let out what he carried with him inside. When he opened a little bit, that was then like a, like a tumor. It just became bigger and bigger. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he died of that. Das war während der, während der Festspiele 66. He was taken ill during the 1966 festival. He had to interrupt his rehearsals, and we didn't know what the problem was. And then he was taken to the hospital in the Nussbaumstraße. And while he was there, he began spitting blood. He felt very sick, and that's when they realized he had cancer, which meant he had a growth between the lungs and the heart. And the doctors would never tell us exactly what was going on, although I think they knew precisely. 
Und das Schlimmste war für mich ein Satz, den er etwas vorher sagte. And the worst for me was a sentence that he said during my frequent visits to the hospital. He said once, children, I am glad to die. fürchterlicher Satz. That is a terrible sentence. And we believed him because we understood each other very well. But to see the readiness to die in a person that one loves is horrible. But he kept working, even in his hospital bed. There is undoubtedly a strong will to live, even in a terminally ill person. Aber wir waren da, wir haben uns abgewechselt. And we were there, Daphne and I, and followed his passage into death, as it were. We were in the same room as him, cuddled up on a sofa. Sehr schlimm ist für mich die die Erinnerung. Sie wissen, der Lungenkranke, der der Röchel. Someone who is suffering from lung cancer croaks when he breathes in. We never knew would this be his last breath, or is there a next breath? And this breathing is life. Will he breathe once more? It was horrible. After the death of my father, his younger brother Wolfgang, my uncle, became the boss. He had a right, therefore, to move into Warnfried, the family house. But he already had his own house where he had lived for a long time. So what did this mean for us? Wolfgang arrived to measure all the rooms where we lived to work out what we should pay in rent. How high should the rent be? He knew very well that Wieland's widow, our mother, had no money. Indeed, there were enormous debts. We had all just started our studies. There was an obvious lack of money. We just couldn't afford any rent. Wir konnten dafür keine Miete zahlen. Das ist selbstverständlich. Winifreds Reaktion war der arme Wolf. Die hat nie gesagt, oh Gott, der arme Wieland. Winifreds Reaktion war poor Wolf. She never said poor Wieland, always only poor Wolf. Then, when my father was still in his coffin in Warnfried, Wolfgang switched the heating off in our home, so it all started becoming damp. Then mold came. We were now all somewhere else studying. My mother moved to Silt, where we had a little house, and so Warnfried became more and more derelict. All our things were there, our toys, the silver cutlery, the furniture, everything was still there. My mother then sold, or rather had to sell, some of it. For me, it was an unforgettable sight, this completely desolate place where I had been born, with dead birds and cobwebs everywhere. That's how this house looked after all those years, unlivable in, deliberately made so. My grandmother just said, when the forester dies, the forester's children have to go. Also alles, er hat, als mein Vater gestorben war, hat er ja nicht nur uns Wolfgang not only evicted us, but he then sacked all the people in the Festspielhaus connected to my father. He destroyed the scenery designed by my father. And worse, all the little models he had made. He burned the complete correspondence between my father and the various artists. And this time it wasn't a book burning, but a letter burning. alles vernichtet, den gab es nicht. Bis dahin war er ja sozusagen im Schatten des Bruders. Until his brother died, Wolfgang had always been in the shadow of his big brother Wieland. But as soon as Wieland died, all Wolfgang's jealousy came out and it became a vendetta against the whole of Wieland's family. Everything that had to do with my father was hacked to pieces. He put my family out in the street, and later, when he himself took up with a younger woman, his own wife was thrown out. 
And his two children, Gottfried and Eva, found their nursery furniture and toys in the yard. He just said, either pick them up or they will be sent to the rubbish tip. He did that even to his own children. We spend the whole year preparing for the festival and employ full-time about 60 people. During the festival, this grows to around 700. I would really like to work in the festival, not only in the artistic side, but also in the organization. In the city of Bayer, the mayor banned me completely and nothing has changed until today. The three mayors of Bayreuth they declared me as someone who is insane, no? which shows a lot of them. It's their problem, not my problem. You know? So, it's, I mean, for me, and this was never, they never apologized for that. What does my family mean? Forgive me for asking. What is this family? Family is just a random collection of people who happen to share the same name. Okay. But to justify being a member of that family, you have to do something more than just share the name. His will was clearly to rewrite history, as if Wieland had never existed. Now I'm here, he said. I can make productions at least as good as my brothers, and historically they won't be able to prove otherwise because there's nothing left. It was a brutal change of regime. Now it's my turn. Out with you lot. He even cancelled our resident registration in Bayreuth. It became more and more like a police state, and although he stopped short of fingerprinting, everything was now thoroughly regulated. Forbidden, forbidden, forbidden. Verboten, verboten, verboten. Wieland war der böse und war auch nicht der Künstler. Wenn er ist, Wieland was portrayed as the baddie, never the artist, as Hitler's favorite child with his private concentration camp in Bayreuth, which is totally mad. Over the years, the legacy of my father has simply been destroyed. Wird einfach so eine Figur demontiert. I cannot allow the Bayreuth Festival to simply become the plaything of the descendants of Richard Wagner. I can only use them if I believe they are doing something for Bayreuth. That's what's really important. We are not simply a training school for Wagner's great-grandchildren. Wolfgang, during his tenure, has improved the, the working conditions immensely. Yeah, so schnell, yeah, good, so good. So, yeah, hello? Yeah, da is nichts mehr zu machen. Da sind sie zu spät dran. Gut, ist mir recht, ja? Gut, ja, versuchen Sie es halt mal. Kommen Sie mal bei mir vorbei morgen früh um 10, da werden wir mal sehen, was zu machen ist, ja? Gut, also, Wiedersehen. Was ist, Frau Sonic? You had, I remember when I began first in 66, my first Parsifal. Then I saw you had uh, the big stage, of course, and then you had one rehearsal stage and another one. That's all, three stages together. And when he left, practically, he had seven stages, six stages for rehearsal, and most of them had the same measures of a real stage. So can you imagine the improvement of the rehearsal schedule? Because you did not have to change each time decoration. The decoration was for this stage, the other decoration for this other stage, and so on. There were some changes, but much, much less than before. And I think, as I mean, this part of, of uh, Wolfgang is not enough recognized. Because I think uh, if he would not have been there and not have done the job as he, like he did, renovate the uh, house like he did, regularly, systematically, logically, the house would be in ruins now. I think that my father once said in an interview, the Festspielhaus is not a playground for the Wagner grandchildren. And I took this to heart and therefore I left Bayreuth for personal reasons as well as for professional reasons. 
Nonetheless, even if I had worked with him for 35 years, I don't think my ideas would have been the same as his. To discuss something with someone, then that's normal. But if you try to change things, knowing that it would never happen, that's very frustrating. Or versucht Dinge zu ändern, aber weiß es geht sowieso nicht. Also macht man eben weiter. My mother was suffering hell in the Wagner family. She always felt completely exhausted in the family. She always, you know, one of her teachings was always, Gottfried, do everything to get out of Bayreuth. No, don't follow the tradition. You should do something for you. It's very important because she never was accepted. So. She was always considered to be a weak person. I mean, she does not fit in in all these strong and sometimes even very power greedy women in the, in the, in the, in the Wagner environment. But when my father Wolfgang abandoned my mother and married his second wife Gudrun, the trouble got even worse, especially when later he tried to appoint her as his successor, as artistic director, for life, just as he had been. Eventually, the children of both Wieland and Wolfgang united against this Gudrun, and that his own children were chucked out. It's a brutality from the side of Wolfgang, which is incredible. Yeah, that's... that's but he treated them the same way as he treated the children of his brother. So he's the same man. It happens very often that the men who marry young women, they grow older, they get weaker, and the other one uh, uh, gets the feeling of power more and more. And the old man, I mean, I've seen film excerpts where the two, where the, uh, the couple is being filmed, and the way she looks and she treats the old man is so disgusting. But I must say, I find his decision to choose his wife as his artistic successor is completely wrong. Maybe blood relatives, members of the family are right. Geeignet sind, aber but not for life. Nicht mehr einen Vertrag auf Lebenszeiten abschließen. There should be a limit of ten years. Sondern das Limitieren auf zehn Jahre. Vom Wagner Zauber verführt, vom Mythos Dynastie geblendet oder aus Angst. We are seduced and blinded by the myth of the Wagner Dynasty and by the fear of change. The Bayreuth Wagner Foundation is now a game. Wolfgang Wagner has been given a contract for life, and he is already 70 years old, thus making this foundation and the representatives of Bavaria and the city of Bayreuth irrelevant. But in a tragic comic manner, he has sabotaged himself. The subsequent public debate has been a farce, a debate in a vacuum, bound by the dictates of the old man, who has proved himself to be the only real politician around. No, I have never claimed that. What some of my nieces and nephews have accused me of is completely incomprehensible to me. So if at the moment there are no obvious successes... Excuse me, I didn't say that either. I just said that although there are some good outsiders who might succeed me, it might be better to choose someone from the family whom I know, someone such as my wife, Gudrun, for example. She 
She was terrible, pathological, an nymphomaniac. I knew her well. Oh my God, I said. What is happening to her? Oh yes, she's drunk today. She always had a hangover. She organized the festival really well. One must say that. But at the end, she developed a very grey skin. She was never a beauty, but she managed to get all those men, they said. First the singers, and then the chorus. But that took a little longer. It was Gudrun's birthday. And I was rehearsing, and Gudrun came in, and I thought, why is she so dressed up today? What's the matter with her? Oh, then she said, I'll see you in a moment, and left again, so I kept on rehearsing. Then someone said, don't you know, it's her birthday. I said, who's? Gudrun. I said, well, you know, I don't care, I've got work to do. But they all took it against me that I had kept rehearsing on her birthday. So finally I had to go humbly to the house and give something to the Queen. And then I received a blessing and I was dismissed. Typical. Typical. She was the last living peasant. There's nothing remotely comparable. Others might say it more discreetly, but the fact is she was the last living peasant. Well, when they all stand like that in front of the theatre, the politicians all come trooping in, all polished up, thinking this is the height of culture, which it certainly isn't. It's just so childish. I can well understand the anger of Wolfgang's children, that their father married this woman, the most hated person in the whole artistic world, even with the politicians. Politicians are not themselves of the finest quality, but even for them, Gudrun was impossible. Her style and the way she represented the Bayreuth Festival. But incredibly, although Gudrun was there for over 30 years, less than two years after her death, she's been completely forgotten. Frau ist weg und vergessen. 57 Jahre hatte Wolfgang das Zepterfest in der Hand. Vor ein paar Tagen wurde der Festspielleiter mit der längsten Amtszeit aller Zeiten gebührend verabschiedet. Und nun gibt er die Leitung an seine Nachfolger ab. Gemeinsam mit ihrer Halbschwester Eva Wagner Pasquier und soll Katharina das Erbe ihres Urgroßvaters bewahren. In jedem Art von Unternehmen, in any type of business, 30 or even 50 years is an enormously long time, especially in artistic matters. New blood is essential, and from the outside, if necessary. You know, it's been an incredible roller coaster for us. There's nothing we can do about it except soldier on. It's not been much fun, nor that the decisions have gone in the way they have. And quite simply, we are now both exhausted. In a few years, how would you like your regime to be remembered? I don't know if you can really define your legacy in just a few years. I think it normally takes a bit longer, but certainly quality. Our successors will know. <laughs> I cannot imagine that this works. I cannot. That will not work. I don't know how. That is a mistake. That is a mistake. Naya, what can we do? <laughs> This is what it is now. It's such a great festival. You must also have a certain attitude that you say, OK, even when the critics are horrible, you've still got to go and do your shopping. You have to be able to stand the booze. Of course, these things are not nice, but hey, they're part of the job. <laughs> it's a super cast. I must honestly tell you, I've never had such a good atmosphere in any rehearsal before. <laughs> They're all very talented and absolutely professional, and they are not going to allow themselves to be influenced by any kind of media pressure from outside. What is Bayreuth? What did Richard Wagner want from Bayreuth? Where do we stand now? 
Why does the same repertoire always have to be played, again and again, every year? Again and again, new directors are told to take a new look at the same old works. Is it right that one has to rethink these works again and again? I can't see why one can't play Wagner's three youthful operas, for example. Rienzi is an amazing work, so why not perform that? It was Cosima who determined this limited repertoire. There is a letter from Wagner to King Ludwig, in which he wants to see those operas to which he felt indebted performed. Der Freischutz, the Trojans, Fidelio and a Mozart opera, the Magic Flute. You are also risking the future of Bayreuth if you don't experiment with great modern works. But again, it all goes back to Cosima, muddling the dynastic principle with artistic so-called tradition. We live now in a media-obsessed society, which makes it ever more important to find a way forward. Simply crawling around in front of the head of state, no matter who is the artistic director in Bayreuth, this is madness. Yes, it has become like a royal court. That's true. What the city of Bayreuth is doing with its plans to turn our home, Warnfried, into a theme park museum fills me full of anger and also great sadness. The early death of my father, the usurping of power by Wolfgang Wagner and later by Gudrun and even by Katharina Wagner, that was bad enough. But what the city of Bayreuth is now doing, handling the unique cultural heritage that is Wagner so carelessly, and I would even say destructively, is terrible. My family has had to endure so many bad times that for the city of Bayreuth itself to set about destroying what should be part of world heritage is unforgivable. Auf diese Weise umgeht. Das ist wie ein Erlebnisbad. Es gibt ja so Erlebnisschwimmbäder. But it's become like a theme park, a swimming pool theme park. Nothing is any longer viewed in an intelligent, even critical way. Irgendwie so kennerisch, kritisch rezipiert. Everything is sucked up as a total experience, a social event. I am here now. I am in Bayreuth. Ich bin jetzt hier. Ich bin in Bayreuth. Bayreuth is a national symbol. All society wants to be there, and this gives to whoever is the director power, or the politics of power, or the drunkenness of power. And if everyone is still kneeling in front of the grandson's words, this position of power is being abused. It's really all about who has the power, and whatever the cost, keeping it. Das macht diese Machtposition aus. After Wagner's death, it was Cosima who saved the festival, which otherwise might have disappeared. Winifried, my grandmother, saved it from bankruptcy. Wieland, whatever the truth about his past, rescued the festival artistically. And my father, Wolfgang, finally put the festival on a secure financial footing. But now, with my sisters, they say they want to open up the archives in Bayreuth, but the important archives are not in Bayreuth, as they must know. So, unfortunately, falsification continues. To reform uh, an own identity, and this always had to do with a very critical confrontation with the heritage, you know, left by Wagner already himself and the Wagner family in the Third Reich. So, who are we uh, then as Germans and Wagners after Hitler? Can you be proud to be a Wagner? <laughs>